Welcome everyone to the Tri-Cities Chamber of Commerce 2021 Federal Election Candidates Debate for the riding of Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathering today on the unceded traditional territory of the Coquitlam First Nation, which lies within the shared territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Katsi, Musqueam, Kikite, Squamish, and Stalo peoples. My name is Leslie Kershane. I'm the CEO of the Tri-Cities Chamber of Commerce, and I'm very proud to be here today bringing to our membership and community this important debate. I would like to sincerely apologize that we are not yet streaming live um, due to a technical issue, but we will be recording this event for posting afterwards. Tonight, we will be hearing from our candidates in the riding of Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, about their party platforms and their plans for the community and our region, as they will be answering the questions you asked. For participating in the debate, candidates met the criteria as set by the Leaders' Debates Commission, including their party having an elected MP at the time the election was called, or that the party received at least 4% of the vote in the last federal election, or 4% support in the polls. For this reason, there are other candidates that are not participating in this debate today, so for a full list of candidates, please visit elections.ca. Thank you to everyone joining us, um, watching this online. And um, I would like to welcome and thank candidates Katerina Anastasiadis, Laura DuPont, and Ron McKinnon. I also want to thank our chamber staff, Westwood Plateau, Galactic Entertainment, and Tri-Cities Community TV for making this event possible on such short notice. I now present to you our moderator for this debate, Randy Webster past chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors for 2019. Randy. Great. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, first, I want to quickly go over the format of tonight's uh, debate and discussion. Each candidate will have two minutes to introduce him or herself. Uh, as well as their party's platform in an opening statement. After opening statements are read or completed, each candidate will be asked a combination of questions. These questions have all been generated from both the community as well as the chamber as well it itself. Uh, we'll be asking uh, the candidates questions uh, until our time is up here today. Uh, based on random selection, each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond to the question. Debate will be closed after, uh, if we get off topic and we'll move on to the next question. So please try to stay on track. Thank you. Um, to finish off, uh, candidates will be given 90 second closing statement uh, uh, opportunity at the end of the night. Without further ado, candidates, are you ready? So our speaking order for to start the evening uh, is determined earlier today by random draw. So. Opening statement will be given to uh, NDP candidate Laura DuPont to start. Second will be Katerina Anastasiadis from the Conservative Party. And uh, finally, Liberal leader or Liberal candidate Ron McKinnon. You have two minutes, Laura. I would like to acknowledge that we are here on the unceded and traditional territory of the Coquitlam First Nation. Good evening, I am Laura DuPont and I am running for the NDP to be your next Member of Parliament for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. I am a two-term City Councillor and I have lived and volunteered here for 24 years. I topped the polls in 2018 and I am known for my climate work and my consistent fight for a healthy environment. When I talk to people, I am hearing that they are tired, frustrated and worried about the future. When I listen to young people, they tell me about lost opportunities and social isolation. Seniors are feeling vulnerable and an awful lot of families are struggling with the high cost of housing. We are also at the point after an unprecedented and deadly hot summer, everyone is talking about the climate crisis. We also know our local businesses have faced significant challenges and too many have had to close permanently. For the past six years under Justin Trudeau, backed by Aaron O'Toole, things have only gotten worse. 
they aren't serious about affordable housing because after years in power, they missed the chance to actually do something about it. They voted against a national pharmacare program and reducing the costs of your internet and cell service. Justin Trudeau wasted over $12 billion on a toxic pipeline we neither need or want. They work for the powerful, the NDP works for you. Since the start of the pandemic, Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have fought to make housing more affordable for families. We will give students more opportunities to ease their debt burden. We got the support that Canadian businesses needed with wage and rent subsidies and business loan programs so you could keep the doors open. Foundational to our platform is a national pharmacare program that will save Canadian companies billions of dollars. It's up to you to choose on September 20th. I have the energy to do this hard work. I will fight for our community, and I'm ready to join Jagmeet Singh as your next member of parliament in Ottawa. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Thank you. Katerina? Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Katerina Anastasiadis. I am your Conservative Party of Canada candidate. I have a strong small business background. My family immigrated here from Greece, and I'm a first-generation Canadian that grew up in a small business environment in the restaurant industry. I've run my own business. I'm also currently the executive director of a chamber of commerce. I bring 15 years, over 15 years of experience in government, <laughs> politics, not-for-profit and private sectors, including having experience in the federal government. I've also been a key player on major national and international initiatives uh, for, between government and industry partnerships. I am running because I cannot stand by and allow our country to be led at the irresponsible and unsustainable path that we've witnessed in the last six years and the poor leadership on many levels including on the international stage. I'm genuinely concerned about our community, our future, and future generations on this and a variety of other issues, like the well-being of our small businesses, affordability, childcare, the environment, as well as the opioid crisis. With the Conservatives, you will get Canada's recovery plan to secure jobs, health, and prosperity for all, Canada's, or for all Canadians and Canada's economic future. I'm proud to be running under the leadership of Aaron O'Toole and our party, the only party that has a comprehensive, detailed plan for economic recovery to secure the future for all Canadians. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Ron, over to you. Well, thank you, Randy, and thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Ron McKinnon, and I'm honored to serve as your Member of Parliament for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, for the past six years and now as your Liberal candidate. I also would like to start by acknowledging that I am joining you today from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coquitlam First Nation and the shared traditional territory of the Tsleil-Waututh, Keitsi, Squamish, and Stolo peoples, all of whom, for, for all of whom this land has been home for since time immemorial. Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, is a vibrant, diverse community. I live here. It's where my wife and I have lived for 30 years. It's where we raised our daughters. This is home. Over the years, I've connected with so many of you. Friends, neighbors, business leaders, community leaders, entrepreneurs. I hear your concerns, and I'm honored to carry your voices to Ottawa with me. Our community may be diverse, but we have a lot in common. I know you're worried about climate change and protecting the environment, and our Liberal government has taking, taken real action here. But we have more work to do. We have an ambitious plan, and we need your support to get it done. I know how important it is to live in a safe and inclusive community, and I share your concerns about affordability. That's why I'm so proud of programs we have introduced for early learning and childcare and increased income supports for seniors. I've seen firsthand these programs make a real difference for families in our community. We're working hard to make life more affordable for all. That includes making house, housing more accessible and affordable. And I know we have been through some tough times together, 
and we have made real progress. I want you to know you can count on me, and I hope I can count on your support to finish what we started Thank together. you, Ron. Thank you. Um, so we're going to move on now to the, uh, to the question portion. I'll give each candidate 90 seconds to respond, uh, and I will do it through uh, random order. Starting with you, Ron, on the topic of climate change, with debates surrounding the pipelines and our exporting of raw materials internationally from BC's west coast, as well as energy products, projects such as the Site C Dam, what is your party's stance on climate change and energy projects? You have 90 seconds. Well, thank you, Randy. Climate change is real. We know that. And climate change is a real threat. And I've heard from many of you that you're concerned about climate change and protecting the environment, and I am too. That's why we've put in place Canada's first climate action plan. It's ambitious, it's real, and it's more than just a plan. It is action. Just to start, we put, in, put a price on pollution. It's no longer free to pollute anywhere in Canada, and we fought that all the way to the Supreme Court and won. We're phasing out coal-fired electric, coal electrical generation domestically and internationally. We're investing in sustainable energy technology like geothermal and wind and solar and tidal power. We're helping industry to retrain a generation of workers so they're ready for the new jobs of, as we transition to the new green economy. And that's just a start. Transportion, transportation, for example, generates 25% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. That's why all new light duty vehicles, this includes passenger and and vehicles and trucks are going to have to be zero emission by 2035. And we have timelines and targets to get us there. That's why we're delivering $700 million to create 50,000 more electrical and hydrogen stations from coast to coast to coast. There's so much more to talk about and so much more to expand on. I couldn't possibly cover it in 30 seconds or 90 seconds, but leading experts have named Thank you, Ron. Sorry. Thank you. We do want to try to get to as many questions as possible. Thank you. Laura, over to you. Thank you very much. This is an important question because this is a very important issue to Canadian voters and to people in this community. We have faced uh, some of the most serious fires uh, this summer, um, a heat dome that killed hundreds of British Columbians, and the uh, climate crisis is definitely something we need to get dealing with. And the NDP government under Jagmeet Singh is ready for some meaningful climate action and they're ready to get started with it right now. We've been dithering for too long and we need to get on this. Some of the NDP's uh, platform pieces are they are going to shift the fossil fuel subsidies that we currently have to uh, green energy projects. And that is something that we need to get turning the corner on so that people in our community have a hopeful future. There is in our platform some very great ideas such as uh, protecting and restoring wetlands so we can sequester carbon and protect biodiversity moving into the future. Retrofitting homes across the country is something that can provide a lot of jobs for our communities. We can get homes that are uh, closer to net zero and we can bring down the emissions that are constantly rising under um, the current government that we have. We need a lot of action on, climate, on the climate crisis, and the NDP government has the meaningful solutions to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Katerina? Thank you. I've been at the doors, and I've been hearing the concerns of many of our voters around the environment and climate change. Canada's Conservatives have a serious, comprehensive plan to combat climate change, and I'm so proud to be running under Aaron O'Toole's leadership in this regard. It is very comprehensive. And this plan will allow us to meet our targets and reduce emissions by 2030, all while repealing Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. Independent analysis that was conducted by Navis Research found that our plan would effectively achieve the same emissions reductions as the government's current plan in 2030 while also resulting in a boost to jobs and the economy. It's very important for our party that while we will fight climate change and protect the environment, we won't be doing it on the backs of hardworking Canadians 
or by hurting uh, our economy. And instead of sending your money to Ottawa, which is what Justin Trudeau's carbon tax does, the Conservative government would create low carbon savings accounts to help Canadians make green, uh, greener lifestyle choices. And we know that th that's what they want to do. And it will do that while allowing them uh, to decide for themselves what works best for them and their family. Canada's Conservatives are the only party with a plan to secure our environment and secure jobs and our future. In fact, we're the first party to have negotiated an acid rain treaty and an environmental agreement historically, and we did this with the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katrina. Okay, on to the topic of economic recovery. If elected, what will be the economic priorities for your government to help small businesses recover and grow sustainably across our communities and beyond? Katrina, I'll ask you to start this, this round. Thank you very much. I'd like to remind everyone that uh, it was the Justin Trudeau government that called small businesses tax cheats not too long ago, claiming that small businesses were cheating on their taxes. Small businesses, family businesses, have had their life savings threatened by the Trudeau government who were trying to hike up taxes on their passive investment income as well. And thanks to the hard work of chambers of commerce like the Tri-Cities Chamber, Trudeau backed off from implementing this massive tax increase on our small businesses. The Trudeau government wanted to increase the effective corporate tax rate on investment income to 73% and 40% in after-tax retirement income. This is the money that many families were counting on. We are focused on being much better with the small businesses than what they've been experiencing during this pandemic under Justin Trudeau's government. They were left behind. Uh, I've heard from numerous businesses, it took many months before they actually got the relief that they, that they needed during the pandemic. Right now they're struggling to find labour, to find people that will come to work. Because the current government has disincentivized this, we will reverse that. We will uh, do this through our Canada Job Search Plan. Once the wage subsidy ends, Canada's Conservatives will pay at least 25% of the salary of new hires for six months after SUE's expires, and we will introduce the Rebuild Main Street tax credit, which will enable middle-class people to invest Thank in you, businesses. Katrina. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? Thank you. Thank you, Andy. So Canada lost on the order of a million jobs at the onset of the pandemic. A year ago, we set our sights on restoring these jobs, and we're almost there. As we continue building ourselves past the pandemic, our sights now are set well beyond that one million. Many of those original job losses were in the lowest paying, most vulnerable jobs. During the course of the pandemic, many of those people were able to improve their skill sets, and in some cases, migrate to new, better paying jobs, so that they're no longer available to return to their jobs. Throughout the pandemic, we worked through mechanisms such as the emergency wage subsidies to ensure that businesses could stay connected to their employees. As we, cover, as we recover from the pandemic, we have created the COVID-19 recovery hiring benefit to provide new means for employers to attract new, new workers and to keep their existing ones. We will take every step necessary to help the hardest hit businesses to grow, to grow create good middle class jobs and ensure that no one is left behind in the recovery. I should point out that in the, the carbon tax, that we, the, the federal backup for the carbon tax, none of that money goes to Ottawa. That money goes right back to the provinces where it's, where it's collected to help, the, help people transition away from fossil fuels, to help us grow the economy, to help us small businesses and local economies to, to prosper. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Laura, what will the NDP government do to help small businesses? Thank you. Uh, under Jagmeet Singh, the NDP government uh, will protect union jobs. That's important because well-paying union jobs ri rise um, benefits and um, wages for all Canadians. The NDP government also has a lot of jobs planned that have to do with handling the climate crisis. As I mentioned earlier, retrofitting um, homes across the country providing really good jobs that will help us build public transit systems from coast to coast. Uh, the NDP government has a lot of ideas for good jobs, benefits, wages, and protecting pensions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, on to the uh, 
on to the next topic, which is jobs. And I'll ask Laura to respond first to this one. All parties are promising in their campaigns to create more jobs as the economy reopens. But at the same time, we are experiencing a huge labor shortage. What is your plan to find, tr find and train workers to supply these increased job demands that are promised? The NDP government has excellent programs and has always believed in using resources to provide programs for apprenticeships and training of workers. Uh, it, shifting from a fossil fuel centered energy community to green energy solutions will provide plenty of jobs for our country. Again, uh, public transit systems and electric vehicle infrastructure will provide additional jobs across the country and the NDP has always believed in training people uh, for good trades jobs and protecting union jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, Katrina, what will the Conservatives do? Thank you very much. As mentioned in my previous question, um, the Conservatives have an economic recovery plan and we are promising to reinstate the million jobs that were lost during the pandemic and get us back to pre-pandemic levels within one year. We also have our Canada Jobs Surge Plan. Once the wage subsidy ends, Canada's Conservatives will pay at least 25% of the salary of new hires for six months after SUE's expires. We will also cover up to 50% of the salary for those who have been unemployed for six months or more. If we want to have jobs, we need to have a strong economy. And that also means we need to get back to attracting investment in this country and not scaring it off. We need to make sure we have a stable investment climate uh, in all of our sectors uh, and not allow political instability to get in the way. Furthermore, to support entrepreneurs uh, who are our job creators, we are making the first 25,000 of our Canada Investment Accelerator refundable for small businesses and providing a 5% investment tax credit for any capital investment made in 2022 and 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Ron, what will the Liberals do to help with the uh, shortage of, of workers? Well, thank you. Um, firstly, the recovering the million jobs lost at the onset of the pandemic is we've almost already accomplished that. We should reach that million probably by the end of this year. We intend to go beyond that. We have programs for training workers, for, for helping workers to adapt to the new green economy. And another very important place uh, that we can attract talented and skilled labor is, is through our immigration stream. So we elected a liberal government will reform economic immigration programs to expand pathways to permanent residence for temporary foreign workers and former international students through the express entry point system. And this is really exciting because of course we've trained foreign uh, exchange students in Canada. They're familiar with our, our culture, familiar with our way of doing business and, and living and it's a great asset to us to, to be able to utilize those in our workforce going forward. We will build on the Economic Mobility Pathways Pilot and work with employers and communicate across Canada to welcome 2,000 skilled refugees to fill later labor shortages in in-demand sectors, such as healthcare. We'll establish a trusted employer system to a streamline application process for Canadian companies hiring temporary foreign workers to fill labor shortages that cannot be filled by um, local workers. We'll continue to work with provinces, territories, and regulatory bodies to improve foreign credential recognition as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay, on to the topic of childcare, and I'll have Katrina start us off on this topic. So Canada, like most wealthy countries, uh, is facing the same problems of couples starting families later in life uh, and having fewer children. The commonly cited reason for this is a lack of affordable uh, and available ch child care. Explain why your party's child care policy is superior to the other party's policies. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is such a critical issue. Um, I don't have a child yet, but I have a nephew and I love him very much. And, uh, you know, I see the impact of child care needs uh, on, on my sister and her young family. Um, you know, Canada's productivity um, would increase 
uh, it lags our, 20, our G20 counterparts, according to the IMF, and increasing women's labor participation in the workforce will, will increase Canada's productivity by 4%. So this is a, a social and an economic issue, of course. Um, Canada's Conservatives will convert the childcare expense deduction into a refundable tax credit covering up to 75% of the cost of childcare for lower income families. And the reason this is significant is because we haven't, we don't need to wait six years um, waiting and waiting like we have with the federal liberal government before a government led and run Ottawa knows best solution is offered to parents. This is different because this, is, can, be, this can be uh, made effective immediately and it provides parents and families the choice for where they want their children to go. Trudeau waited six years into his mandate to make these announcements on childcare and it's no surprise that this came weeks before an election. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Laura, can you explain why the NDP's uh, childcare policy is superior to the other parties? Thank you. The NDP is the party of the $10 a day uh, program, childcare program for Canada. A lot of families in our communities are unable to access childcare, which keeps parents at home when they could be entering into the workforce. The pandemic has shown that a lot of women in our communities have lost jobs, and it has been disproportionately hard on women and families um, during the pandemic. The NDP government believes that people deserve a $10 a day childcare program. They have fought hard to make that happen. And if the NDP government and Jagmeet Singh is elected, we will have a $10, day, a $10 a day childcare program for uh, the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ron. Thank you, Andy. $10 a day early learning and childcare is a transformative idea. It, it is today just as it was 15 years ago when we first brought it in. And which, when it was ended by the uh, NDP and the Conservatives, and here we are again, 15 years later, just trying to achieve it. This is why a, a refundable tax credit doesn't work. It does not build out a sustainable, high quality system of professional early learning educators to, exp to provide a, a proper, um, developmentally appropriate, age appropriate learning, learning uh, opportunity for our children. This is transformative for families. This is transformative for women in particular. It will allow them to advance their skills, to go back into the workforce, and this will supercharge our economy. So besides doing great things for our children to, to position them well for, for their future, it will help our families, it will help our economy. So this is real. We, we announced it in the, in the uh, throne speech a year ago, we incorporated it in the budget, and that's how we were able to start it right here in British Columbia with, a, with a, uh, an announcement with the Premier, Premier Horgan and the Prime Minister right here in, in Coquitlam, poor Coquitlam. This will lower regulated, the average cost of regulated daycare and childcare by 50% by the end of next year. And by 2025, it will be 25, sorry, $10 or less for regulated uh, daycare. Thank um, you, Ron. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I just want to make sure that we uh, stay on, on, on track. Give everyone the same opportunity as, uh, as, their, as their colleagues. Um, uh, we are going to move on now to uh, housing affordability. And I'll start with Ron on this one. Uh, housing affordability is a critical issue in Canada, especially in BC and in this community. If elected, what measures would you take to provide affordable housing for our communities? Ron, we'll start with you. I can't find my notes, but this is a, this is a topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart. In, in, this, um, in this election cycle, we are pr proposing to, to bring in a, uh, a tax, a first-time homeowners, homeowners um, tax-free savings account. We're providing new mechanisms for, uh, for renting, a rent-to-own program. We're providing a, a new homeowner's bill of rights to, to make the playing field much more even to, to help diminish the, the, the pressures on, on prices that, that are driving them up around the, world, around the, the country. Um, but over the years, we've also brought in the National Housing Strategy, which is 
which has created, uh, it meant an investment of $6 billion in this province alone, over 23,000 homes, uh, helping 93,000 families. So we are on this, we're working very closely with our provincial partners and, and to expand the availability of social housing, uh, support community, uh, support co-op housing, and to encourage people to be able to get into the housing market uh, on their own. So we're doing a great deal to, to help people to be able to afford to buy a house. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Katrina, how about the Conservatives? Thank you. It's very clear that the Liberal housing strategy is broken and unproductive. Despite their commitment of over 70 billion, we still find ourselves in the middle of a housing crisis. And Canada's Conservatives will never tax Canadians on capital gains on the sale of their principal residence, something many within the Liberal Party are threatening to do. A key issue is that we are not building enough homes to keep up with Canada's growing population. This is a big part of why homes are getting harder and harder for Canadians to afford. Canadians, uh, Canada's recovery plan will make homes more affordable for owners as well as their renters. And one in five renters spends more than half of their income on housing. This problem appears to be even more acute in suburbs such as Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam. We wanna make housing more affordable by building, building one million homes in three years. Unlike Mr. McKinnon's friend in Vancouver, we should not encourage flipping homes. We also will review the extensive real estate portfolio of the federal government and build more homes near public transportation. We will also uh, help with mortgages. We will encourage a new market in seven to 10 year mortgages to provide stability for, for, for first time home buyers and lenders alike. We will also fix the mortgage stress test to help stop discriminating against small businesses, contractors, and other non-permanent employees, including casual workers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Laura. Thank you very much. There isn't much that's much more important than housing in our community. There are a lot of people in the Tri-Cities area of the region that are priced out of the housing market. A lot of young professional couples can no longer afford to live here and have to move out of the region to make ends meet, and that is inexcusable. Uh, the Liberal government has a star candidate who has been house flipping and making millions upon millions of dollars um, by flipping homes and making money from it. That is something that is unacceptable. The NDP proposes to get the big money out of uh, the housing market to stop large developers and corporations from buying big areas of housing and, and having it sit empty and just using it as investments. That is something that's wrong. Canadians should be able to live in these homes and that is part of the reason why the house prices are so high. Another thing the NDP government will do is protect renters. They have some support for renters and they're going to protect the rental, um, uh, rental homes that we have in our communities. That's something that's really important because not everyone can afford to get into a home in the community. Uh, Jagmeet Singh in the NDP government also proposes to provide uh, an easier system for people to get mortgages and have um, affordable mortgages. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Moving on to a, 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 the topic of reconciliation. Um, with the revealing of tragic deaths of Indigenous children at residential schools across the country, what is your party's plan for meaningful reconciliation with Indigenous peoples? Laura, over to you, please. Thank you very much. I am very proud of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP for the sincerity uh, that he has shown in First Nation communities. One of the most important things that we need to do is start working in partnership with First Nations peoples across this country. Another thing that our governments have failed to do in the past is provide clean drinking water for First Nations. That is something that we've seen promises for years and years from the Justin Trudeau government and they have failed to produce that simple thing that every other Canadian is able to enjoy, a glass of water from their tap. Um, I think that that's something that needs our highest priority and I'm proud of Jagmeet Singh for his sincerity to partner with First Nations communities, have them sit at the table with us for decision making, for everything that we do 
take part in energy projects and get them clean drinking water finally. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Ron, what will the Liberal Party do for meaningful reconciliation with Indigenous peoples? So I, I would first like to acknowledge the recent identification of graves at children, of children at Canada, Canada's residential schools. This is an abhorrent and shameful reality of our country. Our liberal, liberal government has been working with Indigenous communities to provide resources and supports needed as determined by each community. And this is reflected in our platform. We need to work hard to restore one of the most important relationships in our country. Speaking of water as a great example, for too long many indigenous communities have been without clean water. That was unacceptable 10 years ago, and it's unacceptable now. Since 2015, 108 long-term drinking water advisories on reserves have been lifted. In addition, over 180 short-term advisories were resolved before they could become long-term. 51 long-term water advisories remain in effect in 32 communities. No long-term advisories are remaining in BC. And for each one of those remaining long-term advisories that remains, there is a plan in place, there's money in the, in, in the, in the budget, and there are teams um, assigned to take care of them. So we need to continue to confront the legacy of residential schools. We need to continue our work to eliminate all these long-term water advisories. We need to take action to confront systemic racism against indigenous peoples, especially in the justice system and healthcare. We need to launch an indigenous urban, rural, and northern housing strategy. And we need to protect the well-being of indigenous children and families. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Katerina, what will the Conservative Party do? The Conservative Party supports treaty rights and the process of reconciliation with Canada's Indigenous peoples. The Conservative government also created the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as part of the 2007 Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement, which recognized that the Indian res residential school system had a profound, lasting and damaging impact on Indigenous culture, heritage and language. Unfortunately, Justin Trudeau's Liberals are cherry-picking the recommendations from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Instead of doing the hard work of tackling the core issues at, at the heart of, of the challenges that will improve the lives of Indigenous people across Canada. Let me be clear. A national holiday will not provide First Nations people with clean drinking water or end boiled water advisories on reserves. And this is a failed promise that is yet to be, come to fruition. It will not provide economic opportunities or support for education to more Indigenous peoples or provide Indigenous businesses better access to government procurement opportunities. We need to help end human trafficking uh, and, and, and abuses of Indigenous women and girls uh, that have, have plagued First Nations for, na for decades. And we need to provide true mental health support to Indigenous communities. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. On to the topic of budget. I'll start with you, Katrina. With the federal budget deficit soaring, how does your party propose to balance the budget? This is a key reason uh, why I decided to run. As the executive uh, director of a chamber of commerce, I was very disappointed that it took uh, the current government two years, two years to table a budget in the middle of a, pa and during a pandemic. With, with my chamber, I had to report on budgeting more, not less. And uh, that really was a lack of transparency. Trudeau's budget was a massive letdown for Canadians. We currently have the worst debt in Canadian history. Families are, and, and, and next generations are gonna have to pay for this. They're struggling to save more money for their children's education, to buy a home, and we can't afford more taxes on them. Canada's Conservatives got us out of the last recession, and we know we can do it again. Right now, Justin Trudeau has added a staggering 500 billion of new debt in just two years, more than any prime minister in history. Over one trillion in debt, and every day, 424 million is added, and neither the Liberals 
nor the NDP have a plan to stop this, but we do. Under Canada's recovery plan to secure a future, our party will commit to balancing the budget in 10 years without cutting essential services. We're doubling health care transfers, increasing mental health supports, and supporting small businesses, and we know that the budget will not balance itself, and we know that the bottom line item of a budget, as according to Mr. McKinnon, it is important, and it will not, Thank you. It will not be met at the expense of a surplus budget. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Laura. Thank you. Too many community people in our community are burdened by the high cost of living, and that's a problem. The NDP government proposes for, for budgeting in the future to have a much more fair taxation system. The truth of the matter is that regular people have been carrying the load financially of our taxes for too long. Under conservative and liberal governments, that has been something that we have seen, and now people are starting to collapse under the the pressure of high cost of living and taxes. The NDP is proposing a much more fair taxation system so that the people who have made millions and billions of dollars uh, during the pandemic can pay their fair share. They are proposing a 2% tax of people who have uh, fortunes of $20 million and over. I think that's a pretty reasonable uh, amount of money to tax people who have that kind of fortune. The NDP is rooted in fair taxation um, fundamentals, and I am proud of our party for leveling the playing field for Canadians because for too long, Canadian families and those who aren't wealthy have been carrying the burden. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Ron, what does the uh, Liberal Party uh, plan propose to uh, balance the budget? We have been investing in communities and people, and I'm proud of that. We were here for Canadians when they need us most. As the Conservatives criticized every move we made on pandemic uh, support, I realized they wouldn't have been there for the eight million Canadians who needed help to pay their rent and keep food on the table, or hundreds of thousands of small businesses who needed help to keep their lights on, or to deliver vaccines from coast to coast to coast when we needed them. What they're saying is they would have left you to fend for yourself and leave our economy reeling from massive mortgage defaults and bankruptcies and business failures and people struggling to put food on the table and pay their rent, producing deep, lasting economic scarring that would have taken us many years to heal, many years to recover. Instead, we've been here for each of you. We've had your back and we did so while maintaining our AAA credit rating and a strong economy that is ready, able, and already starting to build back better. A strong economy is how we ensure that we can carry these costs together, and that's how this country was built. That's how it was grown, by working together. And even better, going forward, we'll be building on work done over the past two years to develop Canada's first ever quality of life framework upon which we will be basing our budgeting decisions going forward. This means that the outcomes will be judged on how well they meet our Thank outcomes, you, Ron. how they serve people, not the... Thank you, Ron. Sorry to interrupt there. Um, okay, moving on to the very important topic of immigration. Um, obviously, Canada has a, a history of immigration. Uh, starting with Laura, uh, if elected, what are your party's plans to increase immigration to BC to help labor market demand so our businesses can thrive? Jagmeet Singh and the NDP support immigration uh, into Canada to fulfill the needs for jobs that we have. A lot of uh, the foundational platform is rooted in reuniting families and ensuring that people with professional qualifications uh, can achieve uh, similar job positions when they get here with uh, minimal training. So support programs for reuniting families um, to rebuild uh, the jobs that they have so they can perform those types of jobs here in Canada without extremely onerous um, regulations is something the NDP believes in. So uh, Jagmeet Singh and the NDP are supportive of, of those types of things. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Katrina, how about the Conservatives' uh, plans? Thank you. 
We know that immigrants are a vital source of a talented labor force. We need to make sure that our immigration system federally works with the provinces. We need to make sure that it is clear and it is not backlogged with years, years of backlogs, um, confusion and failure. This is the Liberal government's track record when it comes to immigration. It is one of mismanagement. We believe that uh, those that are wanting to immigrate to our country needs a process that is streamlined with clarity, one that treats them with dignity, compassion, and respect. The Conservatives had heard from countless families affected by this Liberal government's poor management of this file and systemic failure to provide Canadians and their loved ones with their clarity and answers. Erin O'Toole announced the Conservative plan to strengthen credential recognition for newcomers and advance human rights around the world. Helping newcomers maximize their success by allowing them to work in their field of knowledge and expertise is good. It's not good, it's great for Canada and for our economy, and we recognize this. So one of the things that we're gonna do to help remove barriers for skilled professionals we need, Canada's Conservatives will launch a credential recognition task force and many other things. Thank you. Thanks, Katrina. Ron, how about the Liberal Party? Thanks. As I mentioned before, Canada is one of the best places in the world to live and indeed to work. And of course, immigrants, are a, they enrich our culture, they enrich our society, and they, they enrich our, our whole country. That has been the history of Canada right from the beginning. Uh, one of the best ways to avoid backlogs in the immigration system is to not lay off all of our immigration staff, as happened under Mr. Harper's administration. It took us years to, to start hiring back and retraining those people so that we could once again meet uh, meaningful and reasonable deadlines for people who want to come here and work and contribute to our society. So a re-elected Liberal government will continue on that good work, but we will reform economic immigration programs to expand pathways to permanent residence for temporary foreign workers and former international students through the express entry point system. And this, as I mentioned before, is really a key thing because these are people who have been here, who, who, who are, are experienced in our, in, our, in our society, who know how things work, and they will be enormous assets going forward. We've already invested in all these, these kinds of people in their, in their positions. It'll be a great opportunity for them to continue to, to uh, work with us as Canadians. Um, we will build on the Economic Mobility Pathways Pilot and work with employers and communities across Canada to welcome 2,000 skilled refugees to fill labor shortages in in-demand sectors, such as healthcare, for Thank example. You. Uh, we will engross. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Sorry, we are running short of time here. Sorry. Thank you. Um, topic number nine: uh, diversity and inclusion. We've one of the one of the topics we've noticed over the last uh, eighteen months. Um, one of the uh, shortfalls in our in our society. Starting with Laura, what specific measures would you take to make our community, BC, and Canada more diverse and inclusive? Jagmeet Singh and the NDP believe in inclusivity and opening opportunities up in communities for everyone. There should be no barriers to people to access services and opportunities in our com communities. Thank you. Thank you. Ron? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I didn't quite hear it Yeah, all. absolutely. Um, diversity and inclusion. What specific measures would you take to make our community, BC, and Canada more diverse and inclusive? Well, thank you. I think we're already doing much of what we need to do there, although more is always better. Better is always possible. We are, we are opening our doors to, to people from all cultures, all ethnicities, all across the world. We are inviting them to come to Canada. We are, we are um, and we're making, we have made a, a country that is inclusive and welcoming of, of people from elsewhere. This is something that enriches our lives, this is something that enriches our country, and this is something that, that gives us a great opportunity to, to grow and, and, and thrive. We need to do more work in areas, for, for example, such as uh, racism and uh, ac acceptance of uh, um, of people who are different in different ways. 
and that is work we are undertaking and continue to do as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Katrina? Thank you. Well, this is a really important topic, and uh, it also hits home with me. Uh, the business community, uh, that I, as I have noticed, has been a real champion of diversity and inclusion. Uh, I can speak to the BC Chamber, the BC Chamber Network, and in particular during the pandemic, this was a critical strategy to strengthen our resiliency, to strengthen businesses, and to get through the pandemic. We need uh, to encourage more education and awareness in workplaces. The federal government can take leadership um, um, through its political leadership, through the government, and in working uh, you know, with provinces, and we can work with our local communities to keep pushing uh, the message out there about how valuable it is uh, to have diversity um, uh, in, our, in our workplaces and what that means for our economy. And I think that uh, those are some of the things that we can do uh, as a federal government to encourage that, to continue businesses to take the leadership that they've been showing uh, uh, in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to our last topic. Uh, we'll start with Ron on this one. It's the top local priority. So, if successful in this election, what would be your first priority for this community? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, certainly, I have been proud to be able to represent this community in Ottawa for the past six years. And one of the best things, I think, in what we have achieved in the past six years is to be able to take the voices of this community back to Ottawa. So I have been, um, I've been open and accessible and very, very willing and able to meet with people in my office and on Zoom and by telephone to hear their concerns and take them back to Ottawa. I think that's a real key thing for any member of parliament to do, is to be able to represent the, the interests and, and, inter and, and concerns of their constituents in Ottawa. Uh, I'm certainly, certainly keen to get back to, to work to, to fight climate change, to continue the, the serious and ambitious work we're doing on climate change, to implement our, our um, $10 a day early learning and child care so that, so that families can prosper and, and so that uh, children can do best throughout their lives. I'm also keen, of course, to implement, to continue to implement our PharmaCare program. We have put all the pieces in place for this. We have even started the rollout of this starting in Prince Edward Island. And I hope to be able to help to, con to make this rollout happen so that we can implement PharmaCare fully uh, throughout the country. Thank you. Thank you. Katrina? Thank you. I think it's really critical that as uh, political leaders, what we do is we listen to our local constituents first and hear what matters to them. But beyond that, a couple key things that I would want to do is make sure that we actually get some key projects built or accomplished for this community. That includes things like a public transportation, you know, extending our SkyTrain to Poco, for example, would be fantastic. We've got different growing communities here. We've got Burke Mountain as well. So thinking about how we can support the growing uh, area and region that we live in is paramount. In addition, making sure that we work really close with our municipalities, Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam, to partner with them. Uh, to partner with them, to partner with the provinces on community infrastructure uh, that is needed. You know, as I understand, over the last six years, there's been nothing done uh, in the city of Port Coquitlam uh, that is notable, and, and that would not happen under, under the track record of me being your MP. Uh, I will be an advocate for the community. I will be accessible, uh, and I will be a strong voice in Ottawa to make sure that we get the key priorities, the key projects done in a timely manner uh, uh, for the benefit of our community here. Thank you. Thank you. Laura. Thank you very much. I'm a member of the Metro Vancouver Climate Action Committee and about a year and a half ago, the sustainability teens who are a bunch of young people came to our committee and they said to us that they feel like our generation is destroying the mental health of their generation by failing to deal with the climate crisis. We have been dragging our feet and dithering about the climate crisis for far too long. Successive Conservative and Liberal governments have really done very little to deal with the climate crisis, 
And I'm not sure about the promises that they're making now because they've had plenty of opportunities in the past. So I would say my highest priority is thinking about the next generation and the big challenges that they face because we have been kicking the can down the road dealing with the climate crisis. The NDP government under Jagmeet Singh has some meaningful solutions to deal with the climate crisis. Shifting the fossil fuel subsidies to green energy projects is an excellent place to start. Building more public transit systems across the country so people can get out of their cars and get onto transit so we can drive down the greenhouse gas emissions that have been going up for years and years and years. We have to get down below 1.5 degrees of warming or we are threatening the next generation with a potentially unlivable future. I think the climate crisis is, is the issue of our times. We have got to get working on it. We don't need any more nice promises. We need action now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Laura. Okay, that uh, is our topical conversation here. So at this point, I want to give everyone an opportunity to uh, win and secure the vote. So we'll give everyone uh, 90 seconds for a closing statement, starting with uh, Laura. Thank you. Justin Trudeau's government isn't working for Canadian families. When people tell you that they don't think that their children will have the same opportunities that they did, that's a big red flag and we should pay attention. Canadians have had successive conservative and liberal governments that always cater to the ultra-rich and big corporations. It's time for change that put people first. Only the NDP will get the big money out of housing, crack down on serial house flipping and money laundering to make it more affordable for your family. Only the NDP supports a national pharmacare program and caps on internet and cell phone charges that can save Canadians significant amounts of money. The NDP is the only party in this room who doesn't support the TMX pipeline and is committed to reducing emissions to get us to where we need to be to meet the science so we can feel hopeful about the future. Supporting families and businesses in our community is what the NDP has been doing through the pandemic, and we will fight even harder for you in the months and years to come to make your life better. Our solutions just make good sense. Elect Laura DuPont as your next Member of Parliament, and Jagmeet Singh and I will work for you in Ottawa. Thank you. Thank you. Katrina. Thank you. Make no mistake and have no doubt about it. The Conservative Party of Canada has been here for you, and it will be here for you. We have a track record of having gotten our country out of a recession. We have been supporting the supports, the pandemic supports in government that you've all received, contrary to what the Liberal Party representative said today. Aaron O'Toole and Canada's Conservatives are the only alternative to secure the future, restore competence, transparency, and accountability to government. With our recovery plan to secure jobs, health, and Canada's economic future, we will secure jobs, accountability, mental health, our country, and Canada's economy. We will recover one million jobs. We can keep hearing promises about these things, but we will actually do it. We will secure accountability with a new anti-corruption law to clean up the mess in Ottawa. We will secure mental health through our Canada Mental Health Action Plan. We will secure our country with the capacity to manufacture vaccines at home and Canada's economy by balancing the budget over the next 10 years. This election is about how we get Canada back on its feet and rebuild our economy, our jobs and our way of life. Canada's Conservatives will focus relentlessly on this, on jobs and wages and get us back on track. Or you can choose a reckless coalition of the Liberals, NDP, Greens and Blocs who will continue with unaffordable spending commitments so who will you trust to get out of the recession and manage the economy? Thank you. Thank you. Ron, closing, closing remarks. Thank you, Randy, and thank you all for joining us tonight. We've come through some tough times together, and now we have some important decisions to make. And we need to hear from you, and that's what this election is all about. I think the choice is clear. We must move forward. On climate change and protecting our environment, we know conservatives, sidelines, scientists, we've seen them do it before. Ten hour a day early learning and childcare, which was started in BC and announced here in Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, this is life changing for young families and particularly women. 
The conservatives have promised to end it, and we've seen them and the NDP do it before. We know that pharmacare will have a critical impact on low-income families and seniors who can't afford their medications. We've put all the pieces in place. It's rolling out now in PEI. Let's make sure it gets delivered everywhere. The changes we're making to make life more affordable are making a real difference for people, especially for those often young families who are trying to buy their first home. And our small business and Canadian innovators need our continued support as we build back better and transition to a new green economy. This is our moment to decide where our country goes from here. We really can't afford to go backwards. We must keep moving forward. On September 20th, please vote Liberal, vote Ron McKinnon in Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, so that we can keep moving forward Thank for you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so that ends the, uh, the, the portion of our debate tonight. I want to, first of all, thank everyone for who, who took the time to view our debate tonight. Particular thank you to our candidates. It's a very brave thing to throw your hat in the ring, uh, especially during the times that we're living in. So we're very fortunate to have uh, intelligent, passionate people like yourselves who have decided to put yourself into service. So thank you very much for that. Um, as Ron said, uh, please get out and vote September 20th. Uh, if you don't know where the polling stations are, please go to electionscanada.ca uh, to find out where the nearest uh, polling stations are. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Chamber, and uh, have a great night.